Ladies and gentlemen, it is a lush spring day in my backyard, and today I am doing an entire shade gardening video. But before we get started, always remember, Earth is my planet. Earth is my planet. So what is going on, guys? It is about time I throw in a bunch of plants that I've been saving up for the springtime in this shady backyard environment I have with two giant live oak trees. Now, before we get started, please smash the like button. It is the best way to help me out and drop a comment down below. I always say you guys fuel my fire and your support does not go unnoticed. With that being said, I'm excited to say the first plant is actually from one of you guys man one of my supporters a friend of mine i am pleased to say so i got emailed by the homie ryan he has a youtube channel called tropical pdx and this guy is like a palm wizard expert and he blessed me with a chinese windmill palm so this dude i actually have one of in the corner of my lot which is in full shade and it is a huge vivacious palm tree it's evergreen it lends to the tropical aesthetic i'm going for in the backyard so this guy will definitely help me create that lost jungle look i'm going for back here and uh, i think the spot for it is gonna go in between a plum and a peach tree i have it'll grow tall and block my neighbor's view like that perfect now let's get this dude in the ground it never ceases now the Chinese windmill palm is obviously my pick for the backyard space. It can grow in shade, it's cold hardy, growing in zones seven to 11. And despite the fact that this is a small fry in the ground, I know what a mature specimen can look like and I know it can thrive and survive through the freezes in Houston, Texas. Now, funnily enough, the next plant I'm throwing in is also another freebie. I have these elephant ears that were in just bags of leaves that I use to mulch this lawn area and they sprouted. So I'm gonna go ahead and excavate these guys and just throw them behind this brick bordered bed I have in the backdrop to kind of separate the native lawn I have growing in and uh, the tropical paradise. So let's dig these up and place them where we want them. Free plants, it gets no better. All right, look at that. So there's one of the elephant ears, massive. All right, so then here's a couple more. I have like an infinite supply of these, so I can put some of them in full shade, some of them in full sun, some in the front, some in the back of the beds, and ultimately just see which one fares best. So this little nook is crazy lush. I'll probably put two back here. So there's nothing better than free plants when you are trying to fill out a landscape, which is the case with me. So these elephant ears definitely do provide a great solution. Now, if you live along a waterway, these can be invasive. So just be careful and keep them in a small yard setting. I promise y'all this giant live oak behind me really makes the garden come to life, man. This is one of the coolest trees and I'm so glad it's on my property. But growing underneath it is the next plant we're throwing in and it is a freebie as well. These I actually started from seed and started from seed is a bit of an exaggeration because I was walking down the sidewalk, saw a bunch of cuttings with berries of this plant, grabbed them, tossed them in the soil, and then a year later, I had some seedlings, some of which I left in the back bed, others I potted up. So in these one gallon containers, I have the native possum haw holly. I accidentally called this the wrong name because it's a seedling. I initially thought it was a dahoon holly, but the leaves are a bit too big. So I think it's a possum haw. It came from a red berry. So if you guys know more than me, let me know. So as I mentioned, there are like four or five seedlings in the back corner. I'm just going to let those guys grow in. Not too much else can grow in the deep shade of the live oak tree. And I have another live oak tree on the other corner. I have four different seedlings of this dude. So it's time to distribute them throughout the landscape. Now, if this truly is a possum hall holly, as I speculate it is, it can grow in full sun to part shade. And seeing as the seedlings are thriving in the shady understory, I think this dude will take off. It grows in zones five through nine, is native to the United States, can get about 30 feet tall, and in the wintertime is covered in red berries, which is a plus for show. So whether these were the red berries I threw in the corner or if a bird ate them and took a massive dump in my garden and then gave me these babies, Either way, I'm thankful, grateful for the free plants and provide a buffet for some birds in the future. 
And yes, you are 1000% right. That is a statue of a koala bear right next to it to try and prevent my dogs from truck sticking and running over this small tree. Now, if you guys have been following the channel, in the winter time, I took a bunch of cuttings of my tropical Thai plant to save it from the winter freezes. I propagated this bad boy and only a couple months later, there were more than enough roots for me to start transplanting these Thai plants. Nice roots are already established. So this is like a zone 10 through 12 plant, but even in zone nine, it'll die to the ground in a freeze and then reemerge. The only reason I took these cuttings was so that way I could still retain some of the growth height and maturity of the specimen while I waited for all of the small fries that were frozen to the ground to reemerge and reestablish themselves. So this is basically just doubling all my plants and keeping a nice flush of red in the garden. So I do gotta take some refuge behind some walls and bushes so you guys can hear me without the wind being crazy. But the next plant I'm throwing in is going to be a fall obedient plant. Now I have a few of these planted in the backyard and they do spread by rhizomes underneath the ground. They get tall and they are cold hardy. So they pretty much stay evergreen, which is amazing. So I'm gonna chunk these guys in. They like shade in the front bed. Now these dudes can grow from Canada all the way down to Texas. So this is an amazing native plant, beautiful pink flowers, and they spread by stolons, not rhizomes, excuse moi. But uh, yeah, it'll fill out in between the shade of my two oak trees in the front yard and hopefully provide a nice stand of pink in the future. So the next plant I'm throwing in is a gorgeous native. This is a Stokesia. Now it gets about 12 to 24 inches at max height. So I'm gonna put it right on the edge of the bed, but this one has gorgeous yellow flowers. So uh, let's go ahead and get it in. It does require a bit more water. So I'm gonna have to keep an eye on it, but I'm gonna put it right next to my elephant ear where I can guarantee it'll get a good amount of water. Now this Stokes Aster is native from North Carolina to Louisiana. So I figure it can grow well in Texas. It likes moist feet and does create a nice ground cover eventually. So I'm excited to have this guy grow and have the flowers just pop off in this damn shade. So the next plant is an exotic. It is a variegated shell ginger. It adds a nice lemon Sprite pop of lime to the garden space. It'll contrast with this. Now this is another tropical that can survive in Houston. It'll die to the ground in the winter time, but reemerge. It was half off at Lowe's. That's why I picked it up as a nice filler plant. So the last plant that I'm throwing in in this video is going to be this frost weed. Now this guy is super unique. It has a bunch of showy white flowers. It can get eight feet tall. Normally it doesn't. And uh, it has this weird habit of having almost like a cotton-like uh, texture at the bottom of it in the winter time. And that little textural form is actually ice crystals from when the stem explodes, it releases water. But this puppy can grow from West Virginia all the way down to Texas. And I can't wait for it to get a little bit bigger than this but it is what it is. And all right, ladies and gentlemen, that is a wrap on this shade gardening extravaganza. Hopefully y'all did enjoy. If you did, please go ahead and smash that like button. These are just a few awesome plants that I had to get in while I could. A lot of natives, a couple of exotics, and either way, they're erotic in this Houston, Texas area. So again, man, drop a comment down below. And always remember, Earth is my planet. Earth is my planet. I'll see y'all soon. Peace. Leaving a bloody life, I roost And I'm in it to win it, so I'm somebody that you should get used to.